I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. We need to, to, to do some clap training for you. Listen, listen, Brandon. Or we could I, get you a I clapper. Have, like, I use a clapper. We could, we could have, I know. They make but Brandon, things that just means, for syncing audio. I know they do, but, like, I'm going to clap. You can. I'm going to come back. <laughs> I don't get that reference. <laughs> no? No. Uh, it's, Should from, I? Uh, it's, it's from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. It's oh. when MC Chris, like... Are they still cause, like, he, doing that? No. No? Oh, okay. They canceled. They canceled. They ended it. And there was an episode that was, this is the last one for real. And then they immediately followed up by an actual final episode. As a joke. Okay. Are they still... Is yeah. Perfect Hair Forever still a, a thing? Per- Perfect Hair Forever was only a season. I'm oh, sure. why do they take away all the good things? Uh, let me see. Like Xavier, Guardian, just, Angel. Oh, wait. No, it was three seasons. It got three seasons. Um. Oh, weird. Okay. So, November 7th, 2004 to April 1st, 2004. And then episodes 8 and 9 were released April 1st, 2014. Oh, good. Because <laughs> that's how time works. Well, because I guess the season's called Bald. Oh, okay. So. That makes sense. I'm going to assume Mike Lazo was the one who wrote that. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, oh, also, also, we're not going to spoil Squid Games until... um next episode so watch that so we can talk about things um have you seen midnight mass no i haven't it's just skip to the last five minutes of the first episode and then start with episode two it's it's and then it's actually pretty good (laughs) i looked at like a rough like description of it but that's about it yeah all of episode one is just uh world building for an extremely small town so it just kind of drags a little bit uh, okay. The point is, it's a small town, and uh, small towns be small. I mean, we grew up in... You grew up in a s- especially small town. Real tiny. Yeah, like, oh, and then also tiny, don't drink but... and drive, because then you'll have flashbacks to a disco zombie. That's usually not the reason you don't drink and drive, but if that's if that's enough to stop someone from drinking and driving, I'm fine. It's Well, it, it's, it's they didn't start as a zombie, um, they're not a literal zombie Nobody in the context of a show. A zombie. Yeah, but they get turned into a zombie by drunk drivers. So don't, don't do but, drink drive. Well, but that's that's how every that's how every zom like a zombie happens when somebody is murdered or killed or dies. Like you don't start out zombie. No. Brandon. What can can you, um you you're not born zombie. There's that no, that that what oh, what was that movie that was just on Netflix um, that had John Batista a, in it and uh, oh yeah that one that one had a a, uh, a, a zombie like get- zombie army it's the one in in New Ve- in Las Vegas yeah that Vegas one yeah, yeah there's a zombie that is a that gets another zombie pregnant after they're both zombies. Yeah, but is that Army of the Dead? Is that really a zombie or is that a human? Because like. Like, did it give birth yet? Do we know? Do we know if that's a zombie from birth? We don't know. There's, so, the, spoiler, the birth never happens. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but that's, that's <laughs> like, that's the point I'm trying to make, Brandon. Oh. Uh, I, I also couldn't finish, I couldn't finish that movie. It gets pretty ridiculous. Like, it, it, well, like, towards the middle, it just hits this, like, I am so tired of this movie right now. <laughs> like, it hits such a lull point in the middle, and, like, I stop caring about all the characters simultaneously. Yeah. So, like, I had no I had no desire to finish the movie because, like, I didn't care about... Yeah. Well, here's a fun fact about um, movies that are, are Netflix originals. Netflix is more of a data... 
a company than a movie company. So they yes. know that most people stop watching after 28 minutes. So the first mm-hmm. 28 minutes of any movie, those are going to be the best 28 minutes of anything that's ever a Netflix original. And then everything else is just written to make it movie length. Well, they get it weird after that. Yeah. <laughs> they get they get weird after the 28 minutes. They, they That's when they start to do experimental shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it works. A lot of times it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's also the weird thing about um people releasing uh uh comedy specials on netflix is their closers are being moved f- to the first 15 t- uh to 30 minutes what so so comedians um they, if uh, are, are reorganizing their um their set their list bits. so they're they're working on a set uh, for like an hour-long special which is like a normal length mm-hmm. But the, there's a difference in the specials being released on Netflix versus the specials uh, that are being independently released on YouTube. And that the set lists huh. for, of people doing their Netflix specials, they move the closer to the first part of the set because they know people are going to stop watching after that. And also, when you do a special on Netflix, they own that special, meaning you, you cannot release your own clips of your jokes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have, oh. you have to move all of the stuff that you would want people to like be attention catchers up front versus Oh, well that's Yeah. that's different. Yeah. So that that's why there's like a way different flow on comedy specials released on Netflix versus like any other platform. Well, there's that one there's that one com- Irish comedian who's like is he Irish or Scottish? I can't remember now. I watched it with Christina, and um, his was just fucking mortifying. <laughs> like the the closing thing, like in a good way, right? Yeah. Like, like was he like a young skinny kid? I can't remember um, his name whatsoever, but I'll probably shout it out in the middle of the episode when I remember. <laughs> that's fair, because that's how I. That's how that's how this this show works, as you know. <laughs> It just is. I don't yeah. make the rules. No, no rules, just right. I just follow them. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's, uh, what are we, seven minutes in? All right. Uh, so welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm searching something right now. You're Googling. Mm-hmm. You're Googling. Mm-hmm. Um, so today we're going to cover Normie, the Lake Norman monster, uh, located in North Carolina. Um, and we've we've been on like a lake monsters kick, and I'm just going to continue that trend. Um, That's fair. Mm-hmm. Wait, you said you said Ireland, North Carolina. Oh, my brain is not working right. I might have said if you said I might because I might have been trying to think of an Irish comedian while reading the the copy so i might have said ireland or north carolina because that's what i wrote so a 50 50 Uh... shot um so the lake norman monster also known as normie is often described as a long and serpentine daniel sloss yes daniel sloss that's who i was thinking of very he he had a good special i like that yeah daniel sloss daniel sloss he did that was the two-part one right he had multiple things but yeah. the the one i'm thinking of in particular was the well i'm thinking about both of them because they're both fucking horrifying like yeah. the the like his closer is horrifying in both cases yes so uh blah, blah, all right yeah so it's long and serpentine with scaly fins or flippers and the creature has been seen by dozens of witnesses including swimmers fishermen campers water skiers and scuba divers uh, scuba divers. Yeah. Wait, scuba divers have seen this one. Scuba divers. Scuba scuba divers. Scuba divers. So, all right. It, you said North Carolina, right? Yes. Okay. Now that I now that I know. Okay. So North Carolina. Are, are there like big lakes in North Carolina at all? Like, not exactly a land that I think of when I think of lakes. There. One second. I'm. There. There. There do be is lakes, and I'll get into the size of. Uh, there's. There's an ocean, but, like, let's see. There's two major lakes that I can see, like, really big ones. 
And then one of them's near RTP. R- uh, so. You know me? <laughs> All dri- Why can't I send this screen? Oh, I guess. Oh, there. I goes. guess. I guess there's more. I guess there's a lot more lakes than I thought. It's the land okay. of many, many lakes. Um, uh, no, nah, I don't think that that's. I don't think that that's. Uh, I don't think that's what that is. <laughs> um, that's. I think that there is actually a land of many lakes, and that's not nor- not nor- South North Carolina. Yeah, is it where? Where's the butter from? Where, hang on. Uh, where? Land of a thousand lakes, Finland. So Finland's Finland's got the lakes, and we've got the thousand islands. Yeah. Yeah, we got the thousand islands. They got the thousand lakes. It's basically like the land from Finland just got transferred to us. Yeah, just butter and salad and, dressing. Uh huh. That's all it is. Um, but it seems people are definitely seeing something large and frightening in the lake. Um, and that's what I'll call the like quotes generic description of Normie, uh, because there are so many settings and descriptions. Um, do you mean do you mean the normies description of normie? Oh God, yeah, that's that's the top of the bell curve. It's the normal description of normie. Um, oh, it's like it's like just outside of Charlotte. Okay. Yeah, uh, but there's so many uh, uh, descriptions and sightings, and in, in this case, the broadness um, of the cryptids wiki is a decent uh, descriptor. Um, The Lake Norman Monster website has a ton of submitted settings, um, and from perusing it, it seems that Normie and its settings differ uh, from other lake monsters. The great majority of these uh, are posting that Normie is a large catfish, alligator gar, group of birds, etc. So it would seem that most locals don't think Normie is a new or undiscovered species, but rather... They just think it's... It's an elusive like, and larger than typical fish. Okay, so it's it's more of a. This is less of a species cryptid and more of a like. Wow, there's just a fucking huge ass catfish in that lake, and we're calling them Normie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Basically, which I kind of love. Like that's a really fun like. That's that that's more urban legend than cryptid, and like that's right up my alley too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, no, there's a lot of cool things about the Lake Norman monster, and am I? Is there like a Rugrats episode of a cartoon that had like a a big old fish? Uh, the, 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 uh, this is reminding I, me of something from a Nickelodeon show once. <laughs> there's definitely, um, there is definitely uh, a Nickelodeon show that had something like that. I can't remember for the life of me. Yep. Um, um, I can't either. The, the most recent submission um, at the time of writing this, which is from July 31st of 2020 by... Um, shit. It's by someone who calls themselves anonymous uh, from Denver. They call North themselves Carolina. anonymous. Well, they don't, they don't call themselves anonymous. They just didn't enter their name. They wanted to remain an anonymous site poster. That was that was, that was a joke about an old. That was an old meme from the olden times. <laughs> from from the olden times. It was it was from a special like a news report on anonymous back in like the aughts. Oh, and, like, one of they those. Say, they they call themselves anonymous. They're hackers on steroids. Yeah, one of those, and it's got like the Guy Fox like news thing in the background. Yeah, back in back in the old days, when <laughs> back in the before times, back in the before times when it was kind of funny and not a little bit horrifying. Oh, it was. It, it well, not explicitly horrifying. It, it was both funny and explicitly horrifying, but. In the scent, but in the style of like that, where like peanut butter and jelly in the same jar, like they're not really blended together. Where you've got to try to discern yeah. that you didn't have to guess it, at whether someone was writing something in a funny or a horrifying way. Yeah, you just no, knew it, it was, was jelly odd. or peanut butter. Yeah, you knew you knew when someone was being serious and when someone was not. But yeah, like now it's it's the 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 the, the, the peanut butter is thoroughly mixed. Yeah, now it's a homogeny. Uh, yeah. So in the sighting description, uh, the anonymous user wrote, um, I was paddle boarding in my cove and saw a six to eight foot dark figure just below the surface, about 10 feet from shore. A few parts were barely above the water. Then all of a sudden it splashed and went underwater. Um, I could not quite describe what I saw. Was it a school of fish? 
birds diving, a person diving, etc. Five minutes later, I'm back at the dock and see the same creature breach the surface of the water close by. Now my second, now second guessing myself uh, has me asking, what's going on? What did I see? A monster? Right? So that, that seems, re- they just saw a big thing. And was like, so what I see. Are we sure that are we sure that this was Normie or was Shaq doing a commercial for uh, Epson Inc. For it was is Shaq doing ink commercials now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. Why are there um, ink commercials? Uh, like for for printers. Well, I know I know um, what, <laughs> I know what inks used for. <laughs> I mean, their inks. Ep- uh, okay, it's Epson. Yeah. Did I say Epson? I think I did. Yeah, he's he's doing like Epson commercials for like those you know those like refill ink machines? Yeah. The eco tanks? Yeah, he's doing commercials for them. Are we sure that are, are we sure it wasn't just Shaq getting prepared for a an Epson eco tank commercial? I don't because he does he does fit the description of between six and eight feet tall long. <laughs> yeah, it said this <laughs> Normie's description is suspiciously similar to Shaq. <laughs> I mean, just by, like, the description that this man gave, a six to eight foot dark figure below the water. Yeah, it could just be Shaq. It could just be Shaq. <laughs> are we not, sh- are we sure that this is not just Shaq? Yeah, it dove like, underwater, he got back to the dock, and then when he saw it the second time, Shaq came up and said, how y'all doing? I'm just looking for seashells. And now it's just Shaq diving. That's an un, uh, that's a good Shaq impression. There's it's so good. It is the most it, that is the most Shaq I've ever heard anyone do an impression ever. There is a lot of vi- video footage of Shaq talking, so I can do that banana thing and just make me Shaq this whole episode. Oh, probably shouldn't. No, probably shouldn't. Do you know about the banana thing? Is it is it one of the is it like the deep fakes for voices? Yeah, it's like an AI that you yeah. just feed it a bunch of audio and then it can like oh, man. do it like perfectly replicates well not perfectly but very well replicates someone talking. Uh, Brandon, we're in so much trouble for that AI. Oh yeah, like our our voices mean nothing now, like whether or not they're real. Oh, if anyone wants to deep fake this, uh, any of us, uh, hit me up. I'll send you the stems of just our solo audio files. So- <laughs> I, I'm like imagining a reality in which your child fakes your voice to get something because they've just downloaded a bunch of episodes of the podcast and made okay, a fake Okay, so before that second part, I was like, so just a demon? <laughs> <laughs> She can just I mean, do, uh, she just does whatever Kenku can do. It's just, well, that's, that's just a child, I feel like. <laughs> children, children have their way, br- ways, Brandon. They do. They have their ways. They have their tactics. Being all adorable and bullshit. I don't trust them. I don't trust children. First, it's pretty please with the cute eyes, and then it's the butterfly mm-hmm. knife. That's how it goes. They have their that ways. That is always how it goes. <laughs> it's always. The butterfly knife always comes out. Yeah. Do you know the number of times I've nearly been cut by my niece and nephew? There's, it's frequent. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Uh, uh, another sighting, this time a little bit older, uh, from May... I don't know why I wrote math. From May 3rd, 2013, by Malcolm Alexander from Charlotte, um, wrote that me and my... That man has two first names. Two Malcolm... Al- oh, you can never trust a man with two first names. Mm -hmm. Uh, me and my dad and a friend were fishing off one of the coves down the hill from the campsite, uh, from campsite 12 at LKN State Park. Uh, it was notably around seven o'clock in the morning and I heard a splash and just as I turned around, I saw what it was. I saw a sturgeon looking thing going back into the water. So it's another, things are fairly reasonable so far. Uh, yeah, I'm like, so far, I'm just kind of like, okay, so this is just people like all talking collectively about what they, what may or may not be just a single creature, or it might just be the fact that like, 
there's a couple catfish in this lake that are just fucking huge or like a s- giant sturgeon. Cause like big sturgeon is not like the most surprising thing in existence. No, not at all. They're already pretty big. It doesn't take much for a surgeon to become a big surgeon. No, they just got to work out. And then next thing you know, bada bing, bada boom, they're removing your hernia. Um, another sighting from the two thousands is from Jeremy Hall of Davidson, North Carolina. Um, from May 20th, it was a normal Sunday morning. I was doing a lot of work in the lake, like I always do, and suddenly I felt a large bump in my kayak. This large bump caused me to panic and flip over. <laughs> well, in the water, I what? saw about a four-foot fish. I don't know what it was, but I am scared for my life now, never going back to Lake Norman again. Wait, what? It was only four feet. No, to be it fair. It was only four feet. Four feet. Like, I'm not still not going to the lake with a four-foot fish. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to the lake in the first place. But four feet is not, like, a crazy not, big um, fish. I don't go to a lake monster at four foot. I go into, I'm not getting in that water, but it's not a lake monster. Um, yeah. Now, these are the encounters like, that are... That's, like, I feel like that's, like, a... Not, uh, yeah, that's a pike. Yeah. It's, like, a pike fish. Yeah, they're, like, that's stuff that's just around here. Um, now, these are the encounters that are more common and I find interesting. That this isn't another plesiosaur in a lake, um, although some people think that's what it may be too, but that's kind of on the fringe of what the Lake Norman monster thoughts are. Um, The most significant reason why I, and I presume locals, discount the idea of Normie being any form a prehistoric holdover is that Lake Norman is (laughs) man-made. Uh, so I think. <laughs> so that you really buried the lead on that one, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> you really, really buried the lead on that one. I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! That's 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 like everything for me right now. <laughs> so that that oh. lets us rule out. Quite a number of things. Oh, Jesus. Um, in fact, it's the largest man-made lake in North Carolina with over 500 miles of shoreline. Created in 1963, it has a surface area of 32,500 acres, uh, and it qualifies as an inland sea. So it is a fucking big lake. <laughs> That means that they had to, they probably had to seed the lake with animal, like fish. They did have to seed. We will get into that right? soon. Like, very shortly. <laughs> uh, like, that, they, they don't just, like, fish don't just apparate into a lake. They're like, hey, hey, I heard there's a new freshwater lake. Yeah? Let's go. Yeah, they just don't magically show up. They don't just, like, yeah. spontaneously come into existence. Um, which, um, my next episode. Uh, deals with spontaneous uh, coming into existences. Um, While this rules out the ancient holdover idea, uh, it does provide a ton of room for a big fish to hide. Uh, Normie also tends to attack boats, uh, more a hit-and-run style, so he'll just bump your boat or kayak, then leave. Um, Something that adds some novelty and mystery, perhaps, to Lake Norman is that it was created by Duke Power in 1963 as part of the Cowan's Ford Dam, and uh, is named after the power plant's president, Norman Atwater Cock. Um, <laughs> there are 60 islands in Lake Norman. Uh, his name has cock in it. His name has cock in it. Uh, and below are entire towns. The lake displaced multiple settlements, including towns, schools, churches, etc. Uh, I mean, that's, that's like, super common anytime that, like... Like, I think the reservoir in uh, uh, the... the sh- Shandokan yeah. Reservoir or whatever. That has towns underneath it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. It's, it's like actually a super, super duper common thing. Is Shoot. Like, um, they they block off a valley and they'll like, like there will be old towns there. Like yeah. that happened in China as well Um, when they, they installed the dam, like the Three River Valley or whatever yeah. dam. Like it, it took out a fuck ton of, um, of towns. Huh. If my memory is correct. That's crazy. Like, it, it's got... It's also, like, creepy as hell. Like, you can scuba dive, your, scuba dive your ass underwater into, like, abandoned schools and, like, bridges and graveyards and shit. Honestly, that's pretty fucking cool, but... That's so I mean, scary. 
it's also super dangerous to go into a, a, a freestanding structure underwater. Oh, yes. Uh, like, so, so the, crazy. The list of known species of fish to live within Lake Norman, right? So these are, we know they're there. They were introduced to the lake. Uh, black bullhead, black carpy, blue catfish, bluegill, brown bullhead, carp, channel catfish, largemouth bass, perch, rainbow trout, smallmouth bass, walleyes, white bass, carpies. So that like, that's it. That that's so. Those are the known species within um, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Lake Norman. The largest in the list is the blue catfish, which can uh, grow up to forty-two inches long and weigh one hundred and fifty pounds um, on the large side, and that's no small mm-hmm. fish. I'd uh, I'd no, put it thoroughly in the fuck that category of fish. Oh, it's a hundred percent in the fuck that category of fish, but not the fuck that category of fish. <laughs> There's a very there is a very diff- big difference between those two categories, and I have to like, I cannot stress it enough. There is a difference. That Venn diagram is two separate circles. Is it though? It's. I mean, uh, uh bluegill. Um, and I'll show you a bluegill. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what it means either, but I'll show you one. Uh, in fact, uh, Lake Norman has so many fuck that big fish, the news isn't about a guy catching a big fish when someone catches a big fish. It's about how weirdly common it is to catch crazy big fucking fish. Um, one <laughs> article is titled, Lake Norman residents are now catching some of the biggest catfish in the state. Um, I'm not going to read through the article, but you get the point. It's not that there's sometimes a big fish. It's that all the fish are just fucking big. I mean, it's also so like you consider the fact that it's a man-made lake, right? So like there's certain things that naturally will occur when a water like a waterway gets populated, Mm -hmm. like predators and like things along those lines and like certain animals might be apex predators or they might not normally be apex predators, but then you have, then you have a situation where that animal can become the apex predator. So naturally it's going to grow. Very yeah. Well. You, you're just introducing them to an ecosystem that isn't typical for them, but now they're at the top of the food chain. It's like, it's like frogs in Australia. Yeah. They have no, they have no natural predators and like, or toads or whatever. The, the, like when they, they release them in a, into Australia, and then they just fucking took over everything. That so the the the, the frogs and the Elder Scrolls Online Blackwoods uh, expansion are just from Australia. Do they they have an Australian accent? There's they do. <laughs> they do. That's pretty, um, That's pretty good. One resident had a sighting in the seventies that they thought ribbit ribbit was mate a, ribbit ribbit mate shrimp on the what oh, I don't even know what frogs eat. Flies, well, you but it's Australia, so it'd be like large dogs and small children on the Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> like, you gotta, you gotta Australia fight. They're fun. yeah, you gotta, you gotta make it, you gotta make it have some stakes. Otherwise, it's not, uh, it's not appropriate. Yeah, exactly. Even like the quack is there. Don't touch them. Um, I went scuba diving. Uh, in the lake looking for old buildings in the hopes of bringing back some old bottles and such. After consulting a 1920s map from the library, we picked up a few sites to dive on and loaded our equipment in the RHIB, which is a, it's an inflatable boat thing, uh, and set up mm-hmm. camp at the lake. We found a small group of three buildings, one of which was a house still with glass in the windows and a collapsed front porch about 80 foot down. Uh... We thought we might get lucky and spotted a big hole in the side of the house and decided to go in the hole uh, instead of uh, risking collapse of the front porch on us. I still okay, wouldn't advise so, that. <laughs> so, like, here's the thing, Brandon. Like, if you're worried about the front porch collapsing, I'd be worried about the whole house collapsing. Yeah, the rest of the house can also collapse. They're not just... Yeah. Like, in fact... Uh, it, it, the porch, you know, is made out of pressure-treated wood because it's outdoors. You, th- yeah. you don't know necessarily if they did the same thing on the inside of the house. It's also in the 70s, so, like, how much pressure-treating were they doing? Yeah, it's true. Um, we had Krypton underwater flashlights. Um, well, the water clarity Good. was... They could they could deal with uh, Superman, though. <laughs> so they can deal with Superman. 
Uh, the water mm-hmm. clarity was near and perfect. Zod. It was dark and black inside the hole, as I presume most holes That's are. How- that's, Most holes are black and dark and filled with terrors it's, it's or joy. Great description of a hole. Um, mm-hmm. So we shone our lights into the big hole. And to our, cle- our complete astonishment, we saw a huge fish. It was enormous, bigger than a scuba diver in full scuba, at least eight feet long and three feet across the mouth. Shaq. Um, we hovered in the... I- <laughs> You can't, you can't argue. It's just Shaq. We can't. I've never seen Normie and Shaq in the same place at the same time. No coincidence. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hovered in the water for a good five minutes with our lights on it, not believing what we were seeing. Uh, I've never seen a freshwater fish that big. We were both a bit alarmed, as I would be too, seeing Shaq underwater. Yeah, I would be too. By what we saw, and we still talk about it from time to time, the only thing uh, it did was pump its gills and open its mouth uh, slowly, like it didn't even see us. Uh, To guess at the species of fish, I would say it was a catfish. A damn big scary one, too. Unfortunately, I haven't seen had the opportunity to dive Lake Norman again after that. Um, Not the old house... uh, might still be standing, but that fish might be a lot bigger in the 20 odd years since. Uh, <laughs> and while not native to Lake Norman, there have been some some crocodiles in the lake too. I just wanted to I throw mean, that in there. Nothing is native to Lake Norman by definition. Oh, that, I guess I, I should say not not introduced by the okay, <laughs> like on purpose. Like, like that space of land didn't have any native fish species. Well, it probably did because there were probably like streams and whatnot. But like there were no like native large fish in that area. No, there were no shack. The, the shack is not native to North Carolina. No, he's native to New York. Uh, yeah. So late in 2000, reports of alligators in Lake Norman began to surface. Later that year, a video of a five to six foot alligator in Lake Norman was released to the local news. Two different alligators were spotted on the lake. No one was able to explain where the creatures came from or how they were surviving in Lake Norman, but they were removed by wildlife control officers. So, like, there there will be the what? odd thing, but it's wait. <laughs> why are they? Why are they saying no one knows how they're surviving in a lake? That's. I mean, they're like they're eating fish. They're eating the fish. I think the the point is just nobody knows how the heck they got there. I mean, somebody probably had a pet alligator or crocodile, and they just let them free in the lake. Yeah, so when they got somebody's uh, DIY zoo wasn't going so hot. I mean, that's honestly the most likely scenario is that somebody had a DIY zoo and they just like kind of released the animals into the wild. Yeah, not impossible. Like, not impossible. The uh, so John, the the reason why I'm going on about big old catfish and out of place alligators is that Duke is not the only plant on Lake Norman. It's also home to the McGuire Nuclear Plant and the Duke Nuclear Plant. Yeah. Uh-huh. So are we getting into Blinky territory then? In fact, that incident about the giant catfish was in the same decade that the McGuire uh, plant opened, and the plant has a history of radiation leaks, uh, site fires <laughs> as well since the '90s. And their event logs have been public on usnrc.gov uh, website, which is the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, a news that's <laughs> a news ar- that's bad. Yeah, oh. that's bad, Brandon. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like really bad. Like actually, like ecologically terrifying. A news article from the 80s titled Duke Nuclear Plant Releases Radiation in Incident wrote, uh, Duke was forced to declare an alert and shut down the unit at one McGuire nuclear station in North Charlotte late Tuesday night um, when a line in one of the four steam generators ruptured for unknown reasons. What Mullen, the fuck? M- Mullen said there was a radiological release at the plant, and he said that the contaminated water was contained within the system and is being treated. Mullen said that the plant was a small uh, radiological release within the allowable limits at the plant, <laughs> and he said uh, contaminated water was is... Con- so Mullen also, by the way, uh, works uh, for McGuire Nuclear Plant, so like he's their PR guy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Local and state... Uh, local, state, and federal authorities are routinely advised uh, of the accident and re- radiation release, Mullen said. So, 
So, like, there's a there's a legal limit to the amount of there's an acceptable amount of rat droppings in food. Yeah, and there's an acceptable so, like, amount of radiation that you're allowed to introduce to the ecosystem. But I, but either of those things, I don't want. I, neither of things do we want. But also, uh, it turns out, like, if you open since the 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 UNSRC was established, um, you are required to report everything. Yeah. Um. So, uh, for that reason, I just randomly started clicking around the uh, McGuire nuclear plant event logs on the .gov site. Oh, my God. And it's strikingly easy to find reports like this. Uh, this was actually the How? very first one I clicked on at random from their July 30th, 2012 unplanned radioactive release report. Um, oh, my God. I've also what? included links to all of the reports. And if you live near power plant, you can go to nrc.gov and... Um, just find all of the reports from your local nuclear plant. Uh, so the thing I hate about <clears throat> this, the thing I hate about this is nuclear power is way safer than coal power. Oh, it's safer. Like, way, way fucking safer. Like, by orders of magnitude. Uh-huh. Right? Like, like, not only is it safer to m- get the raw material, it's safer in terms of ecological harm that it causes. But shit like this makes people scared of nuclear power. Shit, shit like this makes people scared of nuclear power. And I'll, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little... So they have a shit ton of um, reports. Most of them, when you open them, are like somebody forgot. Like, just little tiny things. I just went scanning for things that had... C- control F and then look for an unplanned release. Okay. Um... So they said the system was breached shortly after a chemistry superfire monitored WDGT pressures via operator aid computer data points, uh, indicating a loss loss of pressure. March 24th, 2017, another unplanned release. Event summary. On March 24th, 2017, uh, Unit 2 vent gas ra- uh, radiation monitor increased to minus 251 counts per minute above background radiation, resulting in a trip of the alarm. The alarm occurred... Um, and radioactive waste uh, restarted the BWG compressor, which was tripped. It, it, there's just a bunch of them. There, there's just a bunch. If you um, it, it, honestly, honestly, what I'm reading here, I'm not like an expert in radiation, but like, it seems like things went properly. Like, like, like it's an unplanned release, but like, it seems like the backup systems and like the monitoring systems caught it successfully. Is what this? Yeah. Means. So, so the the. the, the 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 thing that works in the favor of radioactive catfish is there's a lot of unplanned releases at the nuclear power plants that use the lake for cooling water. The thing mm-hmm. that doesn't really work in that is if you read the event summaries, it's unplanned release. The sensor that was meant to trip when uh, pressure went out of allow like outside of its allowable limits sensed that and did the things it's supposed to do. Yeah, it 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 actually seems like everything was correct. Things are working uh, as they it, should be. None of none of this is striking me as like, oh, this is like this is literally fucking uh Springfield and Blinky the three-eyed fish is going to emerge from uh No, Lake Norman. It, it's more like this is more like an unplanned pressure release of the water that was cooling nuclear waste, which in that case is also contaminated, but it's within the property of the power plant. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it. sounds like it sounds like the everything was operating as expected, within reasonable bounds. Okay, so now now my I've I've changed my my stance on this. Okay, <laughs> but I. But I also recognize the fact that lay people are not going to read a report like that and think, oh, everything worked fine. They're going to read that report and they're going to see unplanned leak and be uh, uh, like, just unplanned leak. Unplanned re- like releases of radioactive materials on the lake. Yeah. yeah so, so, like, so maybe, maybe we have a case of like hella big catfish that grew to monstrous size due to constantly absorbing radiation from the yearly unplanned radioactive waste leaks from multiple nuclear plants on the lake. Um, or perhaps an, it's an out-of-place alligator that fell subject to the radioactive waste. Uh, 
Oh, also, I did do some poking around. I couldn't find any evidence whatsoever that the consumption of radioactive material by animals causes them to glow. It usually just causes them to cancer. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone actually knows that it's not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's Teenage, it's teenage Mutant Cancer Turtles. Oh, no. That's so much sadder. Teenage yeah, Mutant they, Cancer Turtles. Teenage Mutant Actually, ca- oh, God. Yeah, yeah, they're not ninjas. They're just, they just, they're like, they're sick. They're, they're, they're bound in bed by yeah. their radiation poisoning. Oh God! Ah, the ooze. The ooze did them no favors, Brandon. Also, Shredder. Shredder is like. Shredder is Shredder's a shell of his his former Shredder. self. Is all I'm gonna say. Oh, they they're, they're really um ecological activists that go to stop Shredder, and they're like they show up and they go. You have to stop, and they point at him, and Shredder's like, "Oh God, your fingernails fell off." <laughs> I mean, Shredder's affected, too, because, like, he he took the ooze. Yeah, true. So, like, we... Super Shredder is not a thing. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I I find the Lake Norman monster very interesting, although I find it more likely uh, to be a blue-eyes white Jesus summoning a lake monster every time a local news article has someone... (laughs) I play blue eyes, white Jesus. Yeah, the, it, you've activated my trap. Well, it's it, Judas. There, there's a lot of people who are described as quote plantation owner or hero of war. That uh, in a lot of their uh, uh, circles, so I'm like, yeah, it's blue eyes, white Jesus is putting the lake monster in the man made lake. Plantation owner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They still. I, ah. <laughs> it, it's more ah. likely to be like it was divinely placed in the lake uh, than it was caused by like it's not the three-eyed catfish from The Simpsons. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, in an interview with Captain Gus from TravelThroughHistory.com, uh, such a good name. Uh, Captain Gus is a really if, good if, name. If, if you have a name Gus and you don't become, if your game is Gus and you don't become a captain, I feel like you're you're missing out on like a perfect moment in your life. That's all Gus's are your born calling. to be captains. They're born to be captains. Uh, if your name is Gus or can be shortened to Gus, become a captain. Yeah, it's that is your true calling in life. You must be. Um, captain Gus said that when people have uh, claimed to see the Lake Norman monster, what they've seen in reality is a four foot female gar who's spawning and being followed closely by 15 to 20 male gar who are three feet long. Captain Gus calls this a daisy chain, and it gives the impression of a long uh, monster-type fish. That is legitimately reasonable. That, <laughs> actually, from a Captain Gus, that is not what I would have expected him to say. Like, No, 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 Brandon, Captain Gus, Gus, Captain Gus's are reasonable men. Okay. I'll bite. Captain Gus are the only captains you can really trust. They're the most trustworthy captains. All he- because their 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 name has preordained them to be the perfect captains. His, so they're trustworthy. His fishing stories are all like I went out there for, I was out there for like three hours, not a bite, not a single thing. And it were like everyone else is like talking about the struggle in this monstrous fish. He's like, nothing. I didn't mm-hmm. catch anything. Mm-hmm. Um th- th- so he's a Gregorius fellow. Uh, he's very philosophical about his uh, preoccupation with the alleged lake monster. He says that if people talk openly about seeing UFOs or lake monsters such as Normie, then others think they're crazy. Yet creating a website about these subjects is considered acceptable, which is why you'll find a website dedicated to the Lake Norman monster. Same website that I read from earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, Captain Gus seems to be all over the Lake Norman monster. And then I found an interview with him and Matthew Myers, owner of the Lake Norman website. And the interview was whoa, sponsored. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's way, way, way too close to some fucking Halloween shit. It is. That's, that's too. That's like, that's like three letters away from Mike Myers. <laughs> it's, 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 it's. That's too close. Yeah, it's really Michael Myers was like, I need. He's like, I'm I'm a reformed man. I need to change my life. And then he moves to North Carolina. 
<laughs> and changes and name opens to a Matthew. lake monster website. Yeah, he's just reformed that was from all true, the stabbing. That was his, honestly, he's just stabbing people because they won't listen to him talk about lake monsters. They're. Just, that's... He's just not good at social interaction, and he gets sad when people don't want to talk to him about it's... lake monsters. Every time, so like he just uh, he just stabs people. It's it's he, it's the eye roll. So he'll tell you about the monster, but as soon as the mm-hmm. eye roll happens, that's when you get stabby stabbed. Yeah, no, no. It, it's because people don't like take him seriously, and it's just like, well, you just flipped my switch. Yeah, that's the only that's reason it. he kills. He's like, I saw red. I couldn't help it. Um. And the interview was sponsored by the Wine Loft Wine Bar. What? Um, I think they gave an interview sponsored by a wine bar. It's, I don't, uh, it's weird. That's kind of, a, that's like this, one of the strangest things. It's, it's strange. I just find it funny that like, there's a, they're being interviewed about the Lake Norman monster by a wine bar. And you're like, of course, like. Of course it would be a wine bar. Of course it's the wine like, bar. Like, what, what else would interview people about a local lake monster that may or may not be sponsored like fueled by alcohol yeah <laughs> like it sounds like the perfect marketing opportunity it, it's 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 a really good fit uh the, the website itself was started in 2002 the year after matt moved to the area and started hearing fist stories this also fits in perfectly with her michael myers um uh theory i'm pretty sure this is michael myers and he figured why not put up a site where people can post their stories. He said, if people laugh at them, great. If they don't, great. Um, he came off as kind of indifferent and just wanted to make a spot for people to share their stories. The- Did he... Does this website have ads? Um, Does it have ads? I know I linked to it on the bottom. I don't think there's ads. Um, He's, mess- he's fucking up. He, he is. Uh, their interviewer oh, yeah, said... Um, I noticed- Oh, there's a shop, though. There's a shop. There, there is a shop. Um, there is a shop. The interviewer did state, I noticed there's a fair amount of drinking in the tales. Uh, the, <laughs> the interview itself was relatively boring. Uh, however, it, I felt it legitimized Do you think that they the were site. drinking wine? <laughs> <There is. What's laughs> do, you, do you think they were drinking wine from the wine loft? Do you think that their, their experience would have been different if they had been drinking wine from the wine loft? There's, do you think when he saw Normie, he was drinking the 2019 Shiraz that's available now at the wine loft? No. What about the 2018? <laughs> uh, the, the interview itself was relatively boring. However, I felt it legitimized the site in the sense that there was no real attempt at pushing product or the site itself. Um, it does appear to have been hacked or, or doesn't appear to have been hacked per se, but exploited by someone who posts the exact same ridiculous story. Um, and some huh. like he, he found a way to get other people's wacky uh, not headsets. I don't know why headsets, he- headers. They're, basically, there's a lot of um. Uh, posts on that site that say one thing, but when you click on it to read it, it's the exact same story like a billion times. Um, uh, that's that's unsurprising to me. Yeah, like just different titles, but the same. St- I, I don't know, it was weird. The poster is kind of adorable. It is pretty adorable. Um. Talking about uh, uh, wacky stories, Captain Gus shared an idea in the interview. He said, uh, what we think happened way back when is there was an experiment and they crossed an Arkansas blue catfish with a whale and a buffalo what? carp and fed it steroids. It one of, Captain Gus. It was one of the first tries at fish farming. The dam broke and the fish got into the lake. <laughs> it was cl- a clandestine operation. He goes on to spin a tale about Captain getting, Gus. Get, I I went to bat for you. He goes on to spin a tale about the fish getting so big it gets stuck under a bridge, uh, and snapping a fin, uh, in a manner in cadence uh, so matter of fact it's clearly something he made up and just says when he he's giving tours. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Uh, American Monsters did an episode on the Lake Norman of Monster. Of course they did. Um, and Amazon also apparently upped their security, so now I can't screenshot their videos that I Wait, went... Brandon, what is this, what is this, this bitch has secrets in stars? <laughs> I'm just saying, look at her. <laughs> that bitch has secrets. I mean, she definitely does. It's, it's an older white woman, and like, 
older white women have secrets. It's but, just a fact. Like, it's the combination of the sweater and how she's wearing her sunglasses. Mm, she does she's, She does look an awful lot like a female Ned Flanders. She's keeping secrets. She, now that you say that, I can't unsee it. <laughs> um, Oakley Doakley, I'll tell you all about that lake monster. Wink. Yeah. That, ugh, God. But I, whatever. Amazon made it so I can't take screenshots anymore to put in these things. But uh, joke's on you, Amazon. Instead of just taking screenshots as I watch the episode, I used my screen recording software and pirated the entire episode. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. You can't print screen it or even use snipping tool or nothing. So I had to, I had to just steal the whole episode. So that's on you, Amazon. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't download a car. I, you wouldn't record a whole episode of American Monsters just for the sake of putting it like three screenshots in an episode copy for your podcast. <laughs> which I did. Did we mention that they that, they no longer show that in front of movies anymore because the music? Yes, based, we oh, did. okay. <laughs> the music itself was stolen. Yeah, <laughs> which is the best thing in the world. Yeah, like to to ah uh, ah. Uh, it, mwah, chef's kiss to that. Anyway, it really is. What I learned was that the North Carolina accent sounds like someone from Catskill doing a Texas accent, which is weird. Okay, uh, I can think of that. I can imagine that. I can imagine that. And then they also like interviewed a guy who keeps saying "Braves," and I don't know if that's racist or uh... not. But I stole it from Amazon, and plus. That's some old timey shit, so it's probably racist. Because he keeps calling it Native be, Americans braves. It, it might be. I don't it might know. Be racist. Anyway, like, uh, it might be bad. I mean, you'd have to probably talk. It's probably on a per tribe basis, like, because like there are probably tribal groups that had the notion of braves, but like maybe not every tribal group is like okay with that. And like also, it's like the whole Atlanta Braves thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, don't use people for marketing your team. Anyway, um, I'll stop here. Is there was no other content other yeah, than people? It's, s- it's pretty racist. Seemingly reading scripts for the first time and overly char- like really character acting. Um, it 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 came off almost like a mad TV skit. Like it it was it was pretty bad. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm only I I. I- I want to I want to stop for a second and say Braves is explicitly like a term you shouldn't use because it 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 ties uh Native Americans to the uh warrior savage uh, notion. Oh, yeah. 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 I guess. As that. opposed somebody uh there was a there's a thing why are Braves racist and Vikings are not. So Braves is a thing to say that makes that uh, equates them to all warriors. Yeah. Vikings were literally a group of people who were warriors. Yeah. <laughs> So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, they're white and they're from Scandinavia. Like, yeah. it's not hard for like As are it's most people for... from Scandinavia. Yeah, most are. Uh, I'm only including this section with the two screenshots um, because I will never get back the time I lost <laughs> trying to get that content. So I'm going to pass a fraction of it on to you. Um, Thanks. This aside, I find Normie uh, rather interesting for the reasons we covered earlier, and that he led me down a rabbit hole uh, of another topic, which I will get to soon. My, it will be the next, the next. Oh, I'm very excited for it. Um, okay. The, it, it, it's another water fairing creature that is common knowledge, is common as a rabbit. However, there is a huge gap in our knowledge of it. Um, and this leads me to a, a Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps, Shaq, Shaq Phelps. Oh my God, they'd be unstoppable. That's, that'd be ridiculous. If they, if they did a fusion dance, they would be unstoppable. Oh, <laughs> uh, we need. I need to see that now. Fusion. Like, the, oh God, that'd be great. Yeah, because not only will he have the powers of a magical genie, but he'll also have all the normal powers of Shaq. As well as the swimming potential of Michael Phelps. You put him in one of those shark suits, yeah. it's fucking over. It is. Oh, he doesn't even need a shark suit. Phelps has webbed feet. <laughs> I know. I was talking about the specific things that, like, in the Beijing Olympics, like, basically destroyed all records for what? Uh, 
Olympics forever now. I thought because... you were talking about those things that they advertised when we were a kid, where it was like fins you put on your hands while you were swimming, and you'd swim like real fast. Oh, he wears those. He wears those as his limiters. They're his limiters. So, like, oh god. Yeah, it's you know you know how like when uh, like um, when Goku or Rock Lee drops drops the giant like his like his leg bracers yeah. things in Naruto. It, it's it's like that okay. except for Michael Phelps. There's did go, I think Goku did that first before Rock Lee. I mean Goku definitely well, did Well they that did the too. was it did he do the was it the heavy clothes cuz he had the gravity he had, chamber. He had heavy he had he had heavy clothes yeah. and uh weights. That for sure. Uh oh here's here's a secret. <laughs> um you when I was in like I forget if it was middle or high school at some point in time I it turned I realized you could just buy those or so just bought them and wore them thinking that it like I wouldn't have to exercise and I would just magically Goku because I was wearing like weighted shit on my legs and I did that for a week. <laughs> it's not good for you. Mm-hmm. It's actually really bad for you. That's not correct. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's it's yeah. Also, it's not comfortable or, or really practical to just go about normal life but with weights on your feet. No, no, no. It's not. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's the end of the episode. There is a programming okay. note. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, we're, we're expected, uh, me and my wife, we're, we're gonna have a, the, the little Brandon in a couple of weeks. A little, a little baby. Well, well, I don't know if I'd call it a little Brandon. It'll, it, it, we're gonna have a little cryptid of our own. Uh. Yeah, it's gonna be a little cryptid, and it's probably, it's probably gonna, your, your little baby is probably gonna resemble your wife more than, than you, but like. There's a, oh, if we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> if we're lucky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Uh, Touche. Oh yeah. And uh, well, the, uh. the the point is, I intend to keep writing and recording episodes. Whoever uh, is the first time, Papa, uh, don't know what I got in store. So the episodes maybe might be a little sporadic, or I'll miss one, or maybe it'll be a little bit shorter than a, a typical episode I do would be. Um, who knows? But the point is, yeah. we're gonna still keep doing things, but uh, expect stuff to be. Uh, don't worry if some stuff's late or something. Don't don't worry about yeah. it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll still be here. Yeah, we're, we're still going to be here uh, and going down new rabbit holes. And, uh, oh, God, I'm excited for the next episode, too. <laughs> I, well, I don't know what I've written yet. So that's, oh, so no, sorry. I meant, I meant uh, my next episode. Your next episode. My yeah, next I episode. I'm, I, was, I was being a facetious asshole on purpose. Because oh, okay. Because you just said something. You just said something that's, like, really important and personal to yourself. So, of course, I had to be an asshole about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, but like, like I, I, we've had this conversation off air, and like, I totally support that. If, like, I'll probably be doing random shit to and play around on the feed a little bit uh-huh. during this time period while you get adjusted to being a papa, a papa. So, like, you know, it, it'll, it, we'll figure it out. We'll, yeah. we'll, we're not going anywhere. The Discord's still gonna be there. We'll probably show up on on random ass streams all the time because that's kind of how we function but you know normal shit normal stuff but yeah no brandon i i wish you the best of luck with all of that and i hope everything goes swimmingly hopefully oh is that because we did just a water based like script just like normie yeah, Aha, i get it it was it was it was uh, but <laughs> oh that remind let me go into my amazon orders real quick let me show you this onesie i bought yesterday uh, but oh, no. up, but How do I view my orders? This is great radio. This is great radio. Oh, while you do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna start the plugs. Um, our, our website's cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. So is our Twitter. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast. Um, we have a Patreon. Um, we have Jackalope level supporters who get mentioned in every episode. Uh, that's Clay Sinclair. Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and Matthew Smith. We also have a Facebook group that I don't really do much in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Brandon, Brandon, while I was reading that, was looking up a onesie he bought, and it's probably one of the greatest, the single greatest onesies that has ever existed in the history of onesies. 
So it's a gray onesie that has four words on it. Uh huh. Um, and those four words are, I came from nothing. <laughs> yes. Which is probably the single greatest <laughs> sentence that could be placed on a child ever. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> so I am, I am thrilled at the, 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 the thing that I'm most excited for, Brandon, <laughs> about you having a child. Yes. Is what you and Erica are going to put on that child. Oh, yeah. Because it's going to be great. that is going to be the funniest shit in the world. Oh, yeah. And I know for a fact that you already have Yeezys and Jordans, yep. which is hilarious to me, separately. And Uggs. <laughs> and Uggs. She, she's got a full, she's got a four Jordan, a Jordan uh, um, outfit, too. That's hilarious to me. Head to toe Jordans on this infant... <laughs> It's pretty fucking great. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's fucking amazing. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> um. <laughs> I came from nothing. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> if you just that's type so in inappropriate infant onesies, there's a lot of stuff online that you can buy. Oh, wait, one second, one second, <laughs> one second, one second. We're 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 done with the episode. So like if you want to leave, by all means, although you might I, I don't know. But like uh inappropriate when inappropriate infant See, now I got to be careful with what I'm writing. What onesie? Onesie? Onesie. <laughs> okay. There, there's a there's a lot of good stuff online. Oh, that's that's not inappropriate. The second one's I love my gay dad. That's that's heartwarming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, some of them are just like, like my my siblings have paws and like daddy's little squirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's one that's like I won my first race and it shows a little picture of a, a sperm. <laughs> my I'm proof my daddy can't resist nurses. <laughs> Oh no! Daddy came first, me next, mommy not at all. <laughs> yeah. Proof that my daddy sucks at pulling out. <laughs> mommy drinks because I tried. I cried. <laughs> Made in vagina. Oh, I saw that one yesterday too. That was another good one. What does this say? Sexually frustrated? What? <laughs> and it's a woman sitting on a on a a, a, a fucking what? It's a woman sitting on a, a washing machine, and it says sexually frustrated. Oh, that's the joke. That you're sitting on the washing Good machine. Good vibrations. Yeah. No, I know, I get it, but like, <laughs> why does that have anything to do with a child? Yeah, there's some onesies that um. They're like, I get my looks from my uncle, which I think an uncle or aunt is supposed to think is a funny joke because, like, I'm the handsome sibling, but really implies that the the mother cheated on her partner with... Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of awful. Yeah. Wake up, drank, spit up, drank, blow out, drank. I'm not a gynecologist, but I'll take a look. <laughs> okay. Some of these. Oh, there's one that's that says for Fox sake, and it has a little Fox. Oh, on it. yeah. That's a cute one. Um, that's a cute one. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. I'm on Instagram at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get so much weirder in the coming months. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>